Okay, so take a minute and, and think about this a little bit now that we know how stack frames work in x86. So here's a C function that presumably will get compiled down to x86. So we allocate an eight uh, character buffer. We uh, read in some input into that buffer uh, using a function that we know is unsafe. So this is one of those functions you're not allowed to use in this course, this uh, get s function. But suppose that we were to use it uh, just to illustrate uh, what can go wrong here. Uh, and then we, after reading in some text into this buffer, we print it uh, again. Okay, so what's wrong with this function? Uh, a, B, C, D, or E. So read those options, pause the video, and uh, see if you can identify which of these is the security problem with this code. Okay, so let's uh, let's think about these. So uh, it reads from an unspecified file stream. That is true, but when you have an unspecified file stream, it's usually coming in from standard uh, standard in. And uh, if we look at the documentation for git s, that's is is a guy, that's exactly how it works. Um, it is uh, reading from standard in, so that's not really a problem. Um, it writes to standard output. That's also not really a problem. Um, many programs write to standard output. Um, we'll skip over C and D for a second and then uh, look at E. So it stores a character array on the stack. That's also not necessarily a problem. Um, the problem can come up in how we use that character array. So let's think about C and D. So uh, it can write to memory in echoes stack frame. So echoes is the name of this function here. Um, and what this uh, option is pointing out is that this get s is going to write to this character buffer which is in echoes stack frame. That's fine. That's intended, right? We are intended to be able to write data into the buffer inside of this function. What is not intended here is to be able to write to memory in the caller stack frame. So echo should not be able to modify its caller's stack frame. But due to a combination of features in x86, um, it is actually possible for this to happen. So D is the problem here. So let's see why this happens. It's really the combination of two features of x86 and uh, you know working at a low level in C. So C and assembly, first of all, do not check for out of bounds array accesses. We've seen this already. Uh, so that's one part of the problem. The other part of the problem is that x86 64 stores return addresses and data on the same stack. It's one system stack. So here's the return address that was saved by whichever function called echo. And here is the array in echo's stack frame that stores these eight characters. And memory is always written when you keep writing uh, to increasingly uh, larger offsets, it's going to be writing into higher and higher addresses. So if you go off the end of the buffer, you're just gonna keep writing data into these regions of memory at a higher address than the memory addresses that are allocated for buffer. And so we're just gonna keep writing and writing and writing until eventually we're going to overwrite the return address that was stored by the caller. So we're writing memory into another stack frame. And in fact, if we are able to replace that return address with something that is perhaps the address of some malicious code that we have written, then this is going to take us to that code and run it after the echo after the echo function finishes running. And so this is hopefully you can see how this allows attackers to gain control of the machine because essentially you can start executing arbitrary code. Once you start executing arbitrary code, you can give your program more permissions. You can escalate. You can uh, change things on the system. Uh, and so forth. And so this has been historically a huge source of security vulnerabilities and exploits. Um, and and uh, shell code is a, a term that we use to refer to the actual code that exploits uh, a buffer overflow. So this is an example of, of um, something that looks kind of like a exploit code. So this is uh, a string that you could send to this program that includes uh, a bunch of executable code um, and uh, it eventually gives you a, uh, a working shell on, uh, on the machine. So uh, I'm sure that this particular shell code doesn't work anymore. Um, 
which is why we're comfortable posting it. <laughs> um, but uh, these things do exist in the wild and they are still uh, being used to exploit machines uh, even to this day. Okay, so how do we uh, deal with this? So there are a couple of ways to mitigate uh, buffer overflows. One of them, which is quite popular, is stack randomization. So um, if you randomize the starting location of your stack, this makes it way more difficult to guess buffer addresses in the stack. And uh, in Linux, this is almost always turned on by default. So it's called ASLR or address space layout randomization. And this is part of the reason why we said at the very beginning uh, that some of these regions in memory are uh, located at random places every single time you run. Um, part of that is to help mitigate these uh, buffer overflow security vulnerabilities. Another thing you can do is something called corruption detection. You can insert this guard value that is uh, called a canary for historical reasons. Uh, this guard value goes on the stack at the end of each array uh, and is a particular value that um, maybe you change every time you run or something like that. Uh, and so what you can do is you can check that value after you return from the function uh, or maybe even before returning from the function. Uh, and if that guard value has changed, then you know that a buffer overflow has happened. So this won't prevent the buffer overflow, but it will at least allow you to uh, detect that it's happened and abort rather than executing uh, malicious code. The other uh, possibly uh, more uh, permanent solution to this is make your code regions read only uh, and make sure that you can never execute code that is provided as you know an input to the program. So just mark your stack memory as no execute and maybe even have two different stacks. So we have a, a stack of return addresses and then a stack for uh, uh, procedure local data. Uh, this does hinder some things like just-in-time compilation and instrumentation. Um, and so this is uh, something that hasn't really been widely implemented, at least in the x86-64 world, but it is certainly a, a more permanent solution than uh, ASLR or uh, corruption detection. <laughs>